What's up, everybody? This is Derek Kirby back with another Mavs Minute here. We have ourselves an interesting little game to talk about here. Now, the Dallas Mavericks have been in, let's say, Strugglesville for a little bit. The Mavericks have lost something like four of their last six. And yet, because the Western Conference is such a train wreck, really, once you get beyond the first three, maybe four teams, you pretty much have a situation where you're by no means out of it. Dallas, in fact, sits seventh in the Western Conference right now, which kind of breaks my brain a little bit because they're a game below 500 and they have played very largely inconsistent to poor basketball throughout the season. We've not had the Luka Doncic impact that we had in the previous seasons. We've had all kinds of concerns with his weight, uh, with the team and how it's running its rotations, how it's handling its defensive adjustments, how Jason Kidd is handling rotations and doling out minutes to some of these guys. All these things have been very, very pertinent, consistent questions surrounding this team, and yet they sit at seventh. And they just got themselves a nice road victory last night beating the Portland Trail Blazers 132 to 117. Now this game it wasn't it wasn't close after about the midway point of the second quarter. Mavericks pulled away and then went up big, ended up winning by 15 points. Really of a buzzer beater layup, essentially 17 point win for the Mavericks. This was a noteworthy game for a couple of reasons, not just because it's a quality win on the road, I know the Blazers aren't very good. They're a few games below 500, I think. Uh, and they've got seven guys out right now uh, on their COVID protocols list. Obviously, the Mavericks have guys out as well. They're missing Reggie Bullock, Tim Hardaway Jr., Luka Doncic. They've got their own problems. Maxi Kleba, another example. They've got their own problems. And because of that, you've got all these 10-day roster guys that probably won't be around much longer. But son of a bitch, if they have not made it, exciting to watch the Mavericks recently just because it's something different the ball is moving better there's more energy and urgency in these possessions and it's just something different than what we've seen largely for the last three years so things are interesting also interesting is you have Josh Green come back from the COVID protocol list and what does he do probably put forth his best game ever of his young Maverick career. Now, this is a guy who just a couple of weeks ago was basically, even by yours truly, being discussed as kind of a dud, only in the fact that the Mavericks weren't giving him an opportunity to grow or develop. You had the game against the Grizzlies where Desmond Bain, who a lot of people say obviously should have been a Maverick, granted every team had to pass on him in the first round, but should have been a Maverick and didn't. And he went off in that game, whereas Josh Green didn't even play. A point which Desmond Bain brought up in postgame. Desmond Green, or Desmond Bain brings up, Josh Green was drafted 18th ahead of me. And, you know, being a local kid from TCU, that stings a little bit extra. Said Dallas was the place he probably wanted to be. Although he insinuates that he wanted to be in Memphis, which that's, of course, you're there now. That's what you're going to say. But he's like, yeah, Josh Green, he was picked before me. I don't even think he was on the court tonight. Ooh. That's the worst part of it, though, is that Dallas wasn't giving him opportunities. They finally give him an opportunity last night. He comes in off the bench, 26 minutes. And what does he do in 26 minutes? A career-high 9 points and 10 assists. Some of these passes he was throwing were passes any Maverick this side of Luka Doncic wouldn't even dream of throwing. Some of these no-look, behind-the-back passes and things he was doing in transition were very impressive. I'm not going to lie. There were a couple of them he had where I was like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, yes. Yes. All right. Dude was dealing. And it wasn't just one or two plays where you're like, all right, whatever. He He's playing a little loose and everything. No, no, no. He was finding guys all night. And he's one of the, I think now, youngest Mavericks. He's 20 years old. So one of the youngest Mavericks to record 10-plus assists in a game. Obviously, Luka's going to top that list. But just impressive what he was able to do last night. And by no means is he a finished product. He's he's supposed to be a 3 and D guy, but that three-point shot still looks a little ways off. 
He does go, he goes 0 of 2 from 3, 3 of 7 from the field overall. But you know what? He plays with energy. He does have an athleticism to his game. And some of his playmaking ability is nice. He's an interesting prospect. I'm not going to say that he's a better pick than if they had taken Desmond Bain and not overthought it, because I don't think that's the case. But I'll at the very least say, okay, if you're going to give him minutes and let him develop and build confidence, you might have an interesting prospect on your hands, which, hey, end of the day, that's all you can hope for with regard to Green at this point. Kristaps Porzingis, meanwhile, went off. Fully in his bag last night, the unicorn in full effect, 34 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists in 32 minutes. He was 12 of 21 from the field, 3 of 7 from 3, 7 of 9 at the line, 2 blocks, 2 steals, only a pair of turnovers. So, yeah, and the reason it really stood out was he was scoring from all levels. He was getting post-ups down low, he was hitting pull-up jumpers, he was hitting turnaround jumpers, he was hitting deep threes, step-in threes, all over the place. He looked comfortable. He looked really comfortable in a way that we haven't seen him be too often in his Maverick career. It kind of reminded me of, uh, not Bubble KP, he he wasn't that level, but when he started to kind of get things rolling a couple of years ago in January after Dwight Powell popped his Achilles, that was reminiscent of what you started to see. When he started to find that balance and that rhythm And it wasn't him forcing things or hunting things, but just looked comfortable in picking and choosing his spots. And it made a real impact. He came out right out of the gates, aggressive and looking, but he also was deceptively good in his passing. You had five Mavericks last night record five or more assists. What does that translate to? The most assists in a single game for the Dallas Mavericks since 2014. I think that stat came from Chuck Cooperstein. That's impressive. 38 assists last night as a team. That is impressive. But what the team needs is to keep playing with this kind of energy because they're finding it at all levels. Yes, you got 22 points out of Dwight Powell, which I think was like his third career 20-point game. And you know what? He finished well around the rim. A lot, The recipient of a lot of those dump-off passes from uh, Josh Green and from even Kristaps Porzingis and he finished well around the rim 9 of 11 from the field 1 of 1 from 3 only 3 of 7 at the foul line but you know what I'll take it I'll take it if you get a plus 22 out of Dwight Powell I will take it because those are rare games especially post Achilles you did get a start out of Nilakina. he plays 23 minutes obviously his role is not as a scorer or even really a facilitator but just kind of as a, a utility guy out there, more of an energy and defensive disruptor. And you know what? Defensively, I thought he did pretty well. He ended up with eight points on three of five shooting, pair of assists as well. The reason I'm going to highlight him is because Damian Lillard had himself, by his standards, a struggle of a game. Yes, he scores 26 points, but only five of 15 from the field, 13 of 14 at the line. You take away free throws and Dame was made of glass effectively like not anywhere near his usual superstar prowess uh and other guys for them for the for the blazers that usually go off not as strong you know powell's had a good season as well and he was three of 12 so really just top to bottom the mavericks with the job they did with nilakina and even with green in his 26 minutes not bad and part of that and i I know it's been mentioned um I know it's been mentioned by a couple other people that do these as well, whether it's Locked On Mavericks or Mavs Moneyball, is that, yeah, some of these guys you're missing right now are not your best defenders. So when you're able to get some of these better perimeter defenders out there, it does help make a little bit of a difference towards the overall team defense aspect. Not saying it's a better team overall, Although what we were trying to do for the longest time this season showed it wasn't going to work. They have to change things up. And, you know, I I like what they're trying to build. I like what they're trying to do. My question is whether or not they have the ability to properly assess their personnel and actually assemble the, the whole 
machine the way they need to to get back on track. Another note here, Brendan Knight, 18 points off the bench in 24 minutes. It's his third game in his 10-day contract with the Mavericks. He was 6 of 12 overall, only 2 of 7 from 3, but even still, not bad. You you like that, obviously, when you get that kind of scoring out of a guy off the bench that, you know, I really appreciated his perspective after the game. You saw how much it means to him being able to get this additional chance in the league. And it's great that the Mavericks have been able to benefit from it, but I don't see him sticking around. I don't think he's going to be kept around once their main guys get back. You have too many guys making a lot of money tied up coming back from this. And even if the Mavericks look to make some kind of change, it's not going to be anything crazy where they're like, all right, that's it. We're going to make sure that we keep Chris and we keep Knight and we keep Pence. Like, you're not going to have that. Charlie Brown's not sticking around. I- I'm sorry. It was a great thing to have on your Christmas Day game, Charlie Brown in there for the Mavericks, but you're just not going to have that kind of setup. Um, But, you know, all in all for the Mavericks, this was a really nice game. This was a good situation to get back on track. As I said earlier, the Blazers were without seven guys, including a couple of their main coaches, Chauncey Billups, for instance. They had former Thunder and Wizards coach Scott Brooks, I believe, on... uh, you know, kind of running things for them. And that's a guy with a lot of experience coaching, but it's still not anything uh, substantial. Still not what you want to have to lean on when you don't have your coach or your normal assistant. So it is what it is. I think it's a good win for the Mavericks. I think it's something that it's an exciting unit to watch right now just because it's different and it's got some energy and some, you're finding some cohesion. KP back from the big toe uh injury came back and was about as good as we've seen him does that mean long term i'm trusting in and banking in him no i'm not buying that stock but i can at least say hey when you get these glimpses it's a pretty nice show it's a pretty nice trick but it is what it is man we'll see what the mavericks are able to do they currently sit at i think 16 and 17 is their current record yeah 16 and 17 uh, tied with the Timberwolves there. Lakers sit at ninth at 16 and 18. Blazers are sitting seven games below 500 and the 11 spot at 13 and 20. And yeah, if you're not the Warriors who are 27 and six, the Suns who are 26 and seven, the Jazz who are 24 and nine, which by the way, you nearly just beat the Jazz who have not been debilitated by uh, health and safety protocols. You nearly just beat them on the road on Christmas Day. In fact, you were in position that you could have won it. It just kind of went kaput at the very end. Not bad. That That's a game where you nearly snuck up and bit the ankle of someone who had no business even being like even letting you be in that game. So you would have loved to have had that. It would have kind of changed your perception just a, just a hair more. But even still... Uh, unless you're one of those teams, or I suppose Memphis, who currently sits seven games over 500 at 21 and 14, and has won seven, by the way, so there you go. Uh, unless you're looking at one of those teams, you're really in just the muck and grime of the West, because from five pretty much through, you know what? Just say five through 15. It's a it's a train wreck. Rockets are 17 and a half back, the five seed Nuggets uh, are 10 and a half back. So about seven games separates six from 15. But the actual car wreck of it, really five through 10 is separated by two and a half games. That's a log jam. It's a weird time that we're living in where the Eastern Conference has a lot more parity and balance to it than the West. The bulk of the better teams look like they're in the East right now. Not to say that the two best teams aren't probably in the West with the Suns and the Warriors, but I digress. But let me know. Let me know in the comments. What did you think? Was this a good Mavericks win? Is there anyone in particular who stood out to you and made you just kind of say, like, that guy needs this, he needs a spot on this team? I look at Chris. That's my that's my take. If there's one guy off of this 10-day contract COVID list replacement uh roster that we've had to compile together that I say needs to be on the main roster. It's Chris, no doubt. Dude, it brings something that no one, no other big man on our team is bringing to the table. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. 
And until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!